I'll just go, hello, how are you doing? Okay, yourself. Yeah, great, thank you. All right, what do you got to show us today? Uh, some fun stuff. Yeah. Cool. Six. Do, 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 do. All right, um, let's just do a share screen, shall we? Let's do it. Uh, let me know when you're recording. Yep, all set. You know how to get rid of this bloody thing too. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so what I've been doing this week, or oh, this last couple of weeks, is working on the identity stuff, the personas and profiles again. And I'm coming at it from a community organizing uh, angle this time. And what I've done is I've like come up with a scenario for what I could do all this stuff for and started to build stuff around it. Very cool. And yeah. Well, the beautiful thing is that this version of the personas and profiles is so much simpler than previous versions because of the work I've been doing with that recursive stuff I showed you. So what we have here is I used the tool that I showed you last time to actually build this application. Yep. So, so this started off uh, with the using the, the uh, preset, which has now got some more modifications and it's only, you just do it all in one line now, one statement. You don't have to do all that mucking around stuff that we did before. Oh, it's cool. all installed for you. It's, it's super slick, but no need to show you that. Um, and I started building this thing called Holodex, <clears throat> which we use internally as a Trello board. And I thought that would be quite a cool uh, app to build. And it actually worked out really nice. So um, I've been doing this. So I've written up what it is. Basically, this idea is that Holodex allows you to manage the people in the community or the members of the community. So like at, at Holo, we have like um, the growth group that you're in. We have the Holochain group, which is the core devs. We've got the Holo hosting group. And then there's the special contributors, such as myself. And they're all you know, in different groups. And that's arranged in Trello. So I've done it here. The thing is that with Trello, that's all centrally controlled and all that, all that stuff, right? So um, let's have a look at the first bit. So if we look in here, we'll jump into the context side of thing. And I did this from <clears throat> the idea of organizing a music festival where you have different types of people. Like you've got like the performers, you've got the crew, you've got volunteers, you've got the people that are coming to the show, you know, all that sort of thing. So there are different groups, uh, like in the crew, you know, like crowd management, stage builders and stuff like, like that. DJs, different stages. And because I wanted to think about, okay, so you built this cool app, great. How do you get people to use it? How do you get people to find it? and all that kind of stuff. So what I did here was put this invite button. So, you know, like when you're doing a Zoom meeting and you want to invite new people and you get the link, that's what this is going to do. So this will give you a link that you can then email, text or whatever to the person. Cool. And then when they accept the invite, that will then sign up with the whole account with personas and profiles which is not just a normal hack, by the way, personas and profiles. It's actually what's called a conductor service. So um, it's kind of like more of a core feature than just a normal hack, okay. um, like deep key and that sort of thing. So the idea here is, is that you can then invite people to it, which makes getting people into your application much easier. And then you have different things that you want to um, that you want to know about people. So let's say we're going to invite somebody to perform on the Sun Temple stage. Here, we have a bunch of different types of profile specs. So, you know, if you're, a, if you're in the crew, we just need your first name and birthday. But if you're a performer, you know, we need like your stage name, first name, last name, bio, etc. So different fields for 
different types of people in your, in your, in your uh, community. So that means we need to be able to manage those profile specs, right? <laughs> So this is a, so we've got your, I showed you how you can drag and drop and all that kind of stuff last week, et cetera. Yep. Um, so this is basically took that template, <clears throat> building an app on top of it. Okay. And the extra pieces I'm building will be more template parts that you'd be able to add into other apps as well. All right. So we've got the idea of managing the, the, organ, your, uh, the people in your community, right? So let's go and look at designing a profile. So here we have, these are the different profile specs that were available when you were adding the cards into the, the previous page. And this is a bunch of fields that are typically used in this type of community um, that you can create forms out of. So here you can see, you know, I could just drag and drop these over to here and you know, I can make, it, I can make a two column form if I want, that sort of thing, yeah, et cetera. Um, this isn't finished by the way, so if anything looks weird, it's because I'm not finished. <laughs> I'm just showing you. <laughs> when, it, when is anything ever finished, Phil? <laughs> but this is cool. Yeah. Now, one of the things that we wanted to do was once I filled out a registration form on one app, I never ever want to have to type in my first name again. I want all the other apps that I ever use to recognize that that's the same field and automatically do it. So then we don't end up in the horrible space of using things like Facebook authentication and Google authentication, which failed miserably two days ago. Did you did you notice that? I did see that. So so just okay, just for people watching, you what you're uh, what you're showing them about to show them is basically imagine using an internet of apps, and your details would always be securely populated. That's right. <clears throat> Cool. I can't show you that yet because I haven't finished that part. But what I'm oh, going to show you is that <laughs> so the community organizer builds this form. So this would be one of the forms that they would then, um, so like we looked at the previous page of the contacts. So, you know, you can go and like add a new form here. So if we pick like performers, so this is a profile spec with stage name, last name, bio. What you'll be able to do is in this page, when you're on performers, It'll have first name, last name, bio, oops, bio, um, in here. So they relate to, so they're exactly the same thing. Then what happens is, is when somebody fills out that form on the other page or in, a, in, another, in another form, and they put in like first name, this, and they fill out, they press the button, that information is not necessarily stored by the hack. Because what you can do is you can say when we're, and next time <laughs> I'll show you, you'll have this. But when, you've, when you're putting these fields here, the person organizing it will go and say, well, you know what? I really, 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 really want to be able to store your first name because we're going to use that all over the place. And I don't want to have to be, keep asking you for it all the time. You know, is that okay with you? And if it's okay with me, then this information fill would get stored in the hat for this music festival. If however, I don't really want that. Um, I want you to ask me for it each time. You can do the same thing. So it'll be like a kind of like a request. And what will happen then is that when this hat for the community uh, organizer or for this music festival needs my first name, it'll send a, uh, a call remote message to me, uh, to the agent, me, and ask to bridge into my own instance of pers personas and profiles, which is where my personal information is. It's not stored in. And then it will send it back. So it's not stored by the app, but the app can use it. And then there's a third level, which is even more tightly controlled, which is user request. So the app will say, can I please have your first name? And the only way it's going to get it is if I physically click something and go, yes, you can have it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> cool. So if you think about your online life, <clears throat> you probably got at least two personas, right? You'll have like your, your personal persona, which is your normal normal details, and maybe a more formal one for work or a less formal one or one that's particular to a community. So if we think about this one, I've put my name in here, Phil. Now I've got, I can go and look at personas, which is what I was just working on before we called. So here we have my different personas. So um, 
by default, I want people to use my first name as Philip, but sometimes in a more casual situation, I will use my first name as Phil. So that's the idea of the different personas, right? <clears throat> so what will happen is, is when I go to, let's say I'm gonna go, let's say that uh, I've been lucky enough to be asked to, uh, the person organizing this community has gone, right, we want Phil. Uh, they've sent me the invite link, which then exposes me to this form. I'll just put by this. So. Just for, um, so I would then fill out this form. And when I submit that information, let's say I've never used Holochain ever before in my life, right? Submit that information. It would then go and create me a new persona, which would be called default. So anything that's not um, that I haven't selected, if I created new information, it goes in this one called default. Um, and so that's, so, so then I can organize it. Now let's say that I have, um, again, been invited. So the organizers hit this button and then I've come to this form, but I also have to be part of the Holochain community or some other community. And I've already filled out one of these forms previously elsewhere for first name. Yep. This will automatically be pre-populated with my default value. So that would say in here. And when you're actually filling out these forms, this is actually an autocomplete or will be an autocomplete. So I'll just be able to start typing PH and I'll have all the options. And that will search through all of the information in any of my personas. So, um, so that way, you know, if I've got multiple first names or I've written up something else about it. As you start typing, it filters it down into the selections. So then I can either select, you know, do I want this one or do I want this one? The beautiful thing about that is now that I've been to um, 15 different music festivals and all this kind of stuff, and I've selected the same values each time, when I decide that um, I don't want to be called Philip anymore, I want to be called Felipe, like my Spanish friend calls me, I would just change it here. And anytime somebody goes and looks at a profile in any of those other apps that I've been registered in, so all the other, they'd go and request my first name, they would get this updated value. And I didn't have to do anything. Just just checking something, Bill. Or Felipe, mm. sorry, I should call you. <laughs> yeah. nice. um, so when you were talk, before you were talking about the three levels, right? My, it's my, my persona is stored in the app it's mm -hmm. it's stored in my personas uh but i'm automatically giving privilege to it and the mm -hmm. third is that i'm manually accepting or manually granting privilege so in this case you've changed your name from philip to felipe does that then propagate into in into haps where you've already said okay cool you can store the name philip or is that just when you use it next time i'm just just wondering that's how right, that propagation yeah. would work well again that's up to the up to the app designer so uh, again with with this and with whole chain like we don't specify how you have to do things there's yep. just a, a way of doing it so in some apps um you would you could push it if you wanted to, I yeah. mean, you'd have yeah, to yeah. do. Mm, no, I probably wouldn't even do that. What you would do is that um, you do it from the, you do a pull from the other side. So when that app needs your name again, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because the, the idea of storing it in their their app is that they can access it when you're offline. Yep. Um, and so when you're online, they can always just do an update and check, and make sure. Yep. Yep. But see, so the idea of um, if you've got a hollow port, which I imagine at 99, once you've got a hollow account and your persons and profiles app is hosted on a hollow box, you're literally online all the time. So the use case of actually storing your information in the app is kind of declining because you don't really need to do that. I mean, like if you have a look, like I showed you last time, everything, oh yeah, there's a weirdo stuff here. Mm -hmm. Right, so everything's stored in here, right? In the database that's on in the in the browser. So I don't have to go and retrieve that every time I want it anyway. I literally would, when you're writing the code, you would just say, um, right, um, oh, let's go and check. It's been a while since I checked on what um, Phil's first name is now. Let's, you know, just go and check. 
it's the same, it's the whole stale library validate thing, you know, just use what you got unless you want to actually go and check that it's right. updated. And, oh yeah, and so the idea of having these different um, uh, profiles, um, sorry, different personas, is that you can move things around. So this doesn't work yet because I'm finished, but the idea is, is that I go and join a bunch of different um, different communities, end up with a few things in here. I can say, well, actually, you know what? I really want another one and I'm gonna call that uh, music. Uh, music. Well, and yeah, then you could just like say, well, that's actually, that goes in there kind of thing. Okay, yeah. So again, we're not imposing on the people using it how to do things mm. uh, because you know that's up to you. But um, you have these these different tools. Also, when the forms are pre-populated, we don't actually use like if I'm looking for your first name, I'm not going to put in what I think is your first name as the as this de developer this app. The first time you need to do it. And then, so you literally teach your uh, apps what you want to use as your first name. Because maybe you've got a field in here called, um, you know, uh, like your, you know, your fourth Christian name or whatever, and that's the name that you want to use. There's no way as a developer that we could match that. But once you've matched it once, the next time somebody else is using that similar field in a registration form, we can just put that in there for you. Which, you, of course, you can change, but you know, it's just a convenience thing. Very cool. Okay. I can really see bridging the really, really simple deployment stuff that you're doing and the work through view, bridging the kind of Trello and the Trello experience and the personal productivity and now into personas. Yeah, I can see where this is going. This is cool. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so my plan is that I will be deploying this for the whole organization uh, pretty soon. Yeah. So we can because then what we can do is um, we can put in the information that's in those columns in Trello and then we can actually invite our members of our organisation to come and join it and start using this whole thing and, and really dog food it. Yep. Phenomenal. Hmm. Okay. So next time it looks like some of the persona stuff will be more built out as well and then we'll be, um, yeah, soon yeah. enough you'll be testing it with live data and testing it internally. That's really cool. Yes, exactly. So uh, I found this really neat, um, uh, really cool uh, project for Vutify, which you can just give it a schema and a model and it does the form stuff for you. It's, it's really nice. It's made the whole developing of this thing so much cleaner. You don't have to do all this like building forms kind of stuff and just yep. like, here's the model and here's the, what I want it to look like and put it in there. Awesome stuff, Phil. All right, anything more for, for everyone for today? Uh, no, not at this point. Okay, super. Thanks so much. Pleasure.